Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News Reporters Tad Stefanak and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, Matt DiMaggio with sports, Ian Cassiola with the Community Bulletin Board, and Marge McDonald with Senior News. We have a full house for you tonight. A Burlington man and former state employee was in court on charges related to possessing and sharing child pornography. Middlesex DA uh, Marion Ryan's office said Jason Riccio, 33 of Burlington, was arraigned Wednesday in Middlesex Superior Court and charged with possession of child pornography and dissemination of child pornography. The defendant is a former employee of the Massachusetts Department of Correction. Clerk Magistrate Michael Sullivan released the defendant on personal recognizance and ordered him not to use the Internet unless searching for employment and not to use social media or access file-sharing websites. According to authorities, on June 17th, it's alleged that Bur uh, Burlington Police received notice from the Mass State Police that someone from an adult website called in a cyber tip indicating that someone allegedly tried to upload child pornography to the website on May 10, 2016 from a possible location in Burlington. Police subsequently obtained a subpoena for the IP address to allegedly used to upload the material when they were able to determine was registered to an address in Burlington where the defendant was living. Authorities say the defendant allegedly indicated to investigators that he located the video of a girl on another website that features one-on-one -on -one webcams. The defendant then allegedly recorded the video while he was watching it and shared this video to the adult website. Following the execution of a search warrant, investigators conducted a forensic examination on the defendant's computer and internet activity and located other video and graphic images of child pornography in files under the defendant's username. Riccio was indicted by a Middlesex grand jury on March 22, 2017. These charges, of course, are allegations and the defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Burlington Public Schools were temporarily placed on lockout mode Monday afternoon after an individual believed to be in town made a general threat to shoot at random uh, any person. Chief Michael Kent said in a statement that approximately, at approximately 1.20 p.m., Burlington Police received a report from the Merrimack, New Hampshire Police Department that a woman had made threats over social media to harm people with a firearm. The Mer Mer Merrimack Police Department informed Burlington that a trace of the woman's cell phone indicated that she was in Burlington. The lockout was announced shortly thereafter and meant that school officials were to be extra careful in who was led inside the buildings. Police did not say the thr threat was made towards any school or student, but activated the security procedure as a precaution. The woman being sought in connection to threatening social media posts was later located by the Bedford Police Department. She is being taken to an area hospital for evaluation. Police say no gun was found on her person or in her vehicle. Lendana Grill once again hosted the annual scholarship luncheon program dedicated to the late Harold Dulong. This year's keynote speaker was longtime Burlington resident and town meeting member and father of Amy Poehler, William Poehler. B News reporter Robert Paris was there and has this report. Friends and family came together as they mourn another year without Harold Dulong. Last week, members of the Burlington community attended the annual Harold Dulon Foundation Luncheon at Londana's. Mr. Dulon was a well-known person in Burlington, thanks in part of his role as an attorney at Reamer and Bronstein, and for his generous nature that led him to regularly give to the community. Uh, well, my former partner, Harold Dulon, he and I practiced law together for many years. Uh, and he tragically passed away 13 years ago, and I am the managing partner of the Burlington office. So professionally, personally, I uh, spent a lot of time with him, and uh, uh, we decided that when he passed away that we'd like to uh, have an ongoing commemora commemoration of his uh, dedication to Burlington, his passion for education, and we felt that this was a good way of doing it. This annual luncheon helps raise scholarship funds for the graduates of Burlington High School. Well, we're very fortunate from the generosity of Londana that 100% of the proceeds that people had spent to be here at the lunch go directly to uh, Burlington High School grads. 
Um, also, there was a very generous um, donation of $10,000 made from uh, the, the law firm of Reamer and Bronstein um, in Harold's name. Um, Har Harold worked, was a senior partner for uh, Reamer and Bronstein and really set the precedent for, for the generosity of the business community and we, we're happy to continue that to this day. Many people came out to support Harold and the current and future graduating classes of BHS. This is a really important event that we have every year in Burlington and it's, it's really a way for a lot of people in the business community and in the, in the educational community to come together uh, for the benefit, to remember somebody that has a lot to do with everything that, that is good here in Burlington. Uh, Harold Dulong was a very important person in our history and uh, you can see bits and pieces of his legacy everywhere you go in Burlington. And so uh, this is an important day and it's a fun day and it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. We know Robert, first of all, we support our schools and our students so well and this scholarship is just another way of giving, the, of the community giving back and the students having an opportunity. You know, we heard from Bill Poehler, he talked about his kids, his daughter Amy that we all, we all know, we, we watch her on TV and in the movies, um, and his son. And you know, if you have a dream, then your dream is worth following. Um, it, you know, it, it could be difficult. It could be very challenging. But what it means for kids is that means it's a lot of work. And you know what? That work is worth doing. So don't, don't give up. This year, the luncheon had a special guest speaker, longtime Burlington resident Bill Poehler. Well, um, my husband was asked to speak at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, scholarship dinner today. I think they're honoring the business community who give money for scholarships, mainly because our, both of our children went to Burlington High and have had kind of interesting careers. That would be Amy and Greg Poehler. And it started off where Sonia said, Bill, would you mind speaking? And I said, oh, okay, I can get up and talk for a couple minutes. And then after I said yes, uh, two weeks later, she tells me, oh, by the way, you're the guest speaker, and it has to be 20 minutes. <laughs> so I really had to put in some filler today in, <laughs> into the speech. Mr. and Mrs. Polar are very grateful that their children attended school in the Burlington community. I think Burlington High School and the school system in itself really helped out our children. With my wife being a teacher in the department, that was uh, great. And also, uh, I feel as though the school gave my children a lot of confidence. And for what they ended up doing, that really helped. I, I can speak uh, but nothing about good things about the system. I worked in special ed for a long time, and that has just changed tremendously. They have a huge inclusion program now. They offer all these variety of AP courses and independent courses and the coordination with computer, the Apple. It's an Apple school of the year, the high school. Uh, it's, it's a great place for kids to start off, I, and I think people should be maybe, things like this today give people uh, awareness of that, that, that works. From Mondano's, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. Town meeting starts next Monday, and as it does each May, the legislative body will vote on a number of proposed capital budget projects, along with the budget, of course. Uh, these projects include four from the Department of Public Works that total a million dollars. One of the big ticket items is $300,000 for traffic light repair at the intersection of Bedford Street and Middlesex Turnpike Extension. DPW Director John Sanchez said when the town originally changed Middlesex Turnpike, they thought they would be able to do it without the lights at this intersection. However, subsequent studies have shown that due uh, to the still high amounts of traffic, it is necessary to keep it and it is up for repair. He said the goal is to bring it up to current standards and have handicap and pedestrian crossings there as well. The second DPW capital project is $200,000 for stream cleaning drainage repair. This is an annual expenditure aimed at clearing out sand and debris from local waterways. Sanchez, this work helps prevent flooding in neighborhoods and that this year they are focusing on the Sandy Brook area, which traditionally has problems. During the flood, workers noticed pockets of sand that could act as dams if they build up, and so they were mapped and will be re removed. Finally, DDPW was also asking for $500,000 to replace four vehicles and purchase one entirely new piece of equipment. 
Two of the replacement vehicles are sanders that are old and broken down, another is an SUV for engineering, and the fourth is a replacement truck for the cemeteries that was, uh, that was total in an accident. The new vehicle is a sidewalk paver. Sanchez said this equipment was not in the capital plan, but they decided to include it in the list due to an expressed interest by town meeting for more focus on sidewalk repair. He said the vehicle will be used for repairing asphalt sidewalks and the plan is to first focus on those sidewalks near schools and then to move out into uh, other neighborhoods. You can read more details at www.bcattv.org forward slash bnews. Burlington Town Meeting will be voting on a warrant that will allow active members of the military that work for the town to have some quality time with their families. Article 27 of the town meeting warrant asks if the town will adopt Mass General Law Chapter 33, Section 59, Effective Military Service on Salary, Seniority, and Leave Allowance of Public Employees. Burlington Veterans Affairs Director Chris Hannafin explained that what the adoption of this law would mean is that active members of the military who work for the town wouldn't be charged vacation days due to participate in training. They would be given up to 17 paid days for military training and other responsibilities related to service. He said members of the Reserves and National Guard train one weekend each month and also have a multi-week training each year. This means a lot of time away from home and most importantly may have to use up their vacation time for training. Anna Fent said this is important because many members of the military, when they work for the towns, often takes jobs such as police officers and firefighters. He said studies show that most of the injuries, particularly mental injuries, are a cause of stress that is the result of not having enough leisure time to decompress. Hannaford said even though this warrant article would give some town employees paid leave, he thinks the town still comes out ahead in the numbers. By hiring individuals on health care plans provided by the military, the town saves fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars a year. Finally, he said adopting the section of Mass General Law would show support to those who have served and continue to serve. He also said many neighboring communities have already adopted the provision. Again, you can read more details at bcattv.org forward slash bnews. Late last month, the Burlington business owner received two awards from the National Small Business Association. BNews Director Rich, Rich Hosford went to check it out and has this report. In a high-class office building off of Wheeler Road in Burlington, there is a small business with a global reach whose owner has recently been recognized with two awards for building and sustaining her vision. Victoria Bondock, owner of the defense and national security consulting firm Gemini Industries, is this year's Small Business Administration Small Business Person of the Year for Massachusetts, and her business is the Woman-Owned Small Business of the Year recipient for the state. It's a big accomplishment in a recognition of her business, the team she manages, and the charitable contributions to local causes that she has made. Being selected for the Person of the Year Award and the Woman-Owned Business of the Year is an incredible honor. I think it's a testament to Gemini's no fail, no excuses support to national security and to my amazing team. Her colleague said it was no surprise she won this award and pointed to her strong leadership skills. So uh, Victoria and I are on the board of Entrepreneurs Organization, the Boston chapter, and we have a nickname for her. We call her the General because she always has high level strategic and tactical input on everything that we discuss at a board level. Uh, just working with her and in, in really getting to understand her business, uh, it's, she is just such a high performing CEO. Yeah, as my understanding is that she started this on her own 30 years ago uh, in an industry that uh, I think there were few, if any, women, uh, the defense industry. Uh, and she grew Gemini Industries to uh, really a very successful uh, company that uh, uh, does primarily contracting uh, with the federal government. Um, and she's built her team, and she has a number of locations. And again, I think what has been the core of her success and again, it's her leadership, but um, one of the things you see, and I think it's part of the bone marrow of all her team members, is sort of the uh, concept that they really have incorporated that, you know, uh, uh, duty beyond self and really being focused on uh, the mission and the accomplishment. So she has this, uh, you know, no fail approach 
uh, to life and to work. So what exactly is Gemini and what do they do? Gemini is an advisor to high-level national security leaders and business executives. We provide strategies, we deliver technology, and we provide logistics to help our customers achieve their goals. Gemini now has upwards of 1,000 employees at 12 locations across the United States and even overseas. But it didn't start out that way, and its beginning is actually quite a story and speaks to the successful leader Victoria would become and how she would overcome challenges that were in her way. Building a business is challenging for any individual. And what it takes to be successful in business is not to back down from a challenge. When I started Gemini, it was me. I was Gemini. And like with any business, contracts were tough to come by. Then one came up. The contract was to work with an undercover army team investigating black market crime in a danger zone. So I had a choice to make. I weighed the risk of the unknown against the opportunity to contribute to our nation's security. I chose the contract. And it's been a privilege to support national security for more than 30 years. Finally, I asked if she had any advice for other small business owners just starting out. In order to be successful, the one rule I have is that leadership's a gift. It's a gift that your team gives to you. And your job as the leader is to deserve it. So what you have to do is to put the needs of your team and the needs of the goal that you're trying to accomplish first. That's what creates the bond within your team and creates for you an unbeatable team. That's what I've got. At Gemini Industries, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. According to reports on Wednesday afternoon, many email users received invites to view a Google Docs file. The emails look legitimate and uh, often come from people the recipient knows. The email also has a real-looking Google.com URL. Locally, some Burlington Town offices have been affected and scam emails have been sent from town employees. We at BCAT received phishing emails from at least three town employees' accounts. Town employees were aware of the situation and were looking for solutions. If you receive a suspicious email with a Google Docs invite, delete it. One way to tell is that many are being, uh, being reported to having uh, been addressed to HHH rather than the recipient. Google itself tweeted that it is aware of the issue and encouraged customers not to click on any suspicious Google Docs invite. April showers are now bringing May flowers, and the Burlington Garden Club is abloom with a bouquet of activities and happenings for Burlington's gardeners and those uh, looking to brighten their lives with flora and plant life. The Burlington Garden Club kicked off the season recently with a major event. B News reporter Tad Stefanak files this report. Spring has sprung in Burlington, and the Burlington Garden Club is budding with activity, including their recent spring fever event they had been planning since January. There was plenty of goodies for snacking and a plethora of raffle items to suit any plant lover or gardener. But the main attraction was the presentation by florist extraordinaire, Bert Ford. Very well known flower designer. He puts together a combination of flowers and vegetables in unbelievable artistic arrangements. And he's got a great sense of humor and he's a great entertainer. We were very lucky to get a grant from the Cultural Council that pays for part of the cost of, of having Mr. Ford here. He's very popular. We were lucky to get him. He's um, been at many garden clubs and other events. The Cultural Council has allowed us to open it up to the public, and we're very fortunate that a lot of people have come tonight. I have a flower shop in Salem, New Hampshire called Ford Flower Company that my wife and I founded 34 years ago. We just have a great store. It's, uh, we do all kinds of weddings and parties and events and plants and food and gifts and all kinds of good stuff. Renowned throughout New England as a premier floral designer, Bert Ford has a signature style that literally 
gives his arrangements flavor. It's it's kind of my signature, especially with garden clubs and in events. We do, a, you know, we bring in a lot of fruit and vegetables. Actually, one of my favorite places to shop is a grocery store. You know, obviously, I'm not a young man. I've been in the industry a long time. And, you know, I keep challenging myself. And by using different products and different things that are affiliated or peripherals to the flower industry, make us a little bit different than most stores. The Burlington Garden Club was truly inspired. And soon you can see some of Burlington's homegrown flora and greenery. Oh, the plant sale is May 20th. We have one every year. Uh, we have great plants. Many of them are perennials that come f right from our members' gardens, so they are healthy. Uh, they've been well taken care of, and they are at a very reasonable price. So we hope people will come to that as well, and that's going to be in front of the front of the recreation department. And for you green thumbs interested in the Burlington Garden Club, they can contact any of the members. Um, we also have a Facebook page that they can go on to pull up any of our information. It shows all our different events, all the different community activities that we do. And um, it's, we're looking for fresh faces and, and new membership to, to come and join and help us make a bigger club. Aside from being inducted into the American Institute of Floral Designers, Burt Ford has galvanized his legacy. It's soon to be a second generation company. Uh, we have adult children that are both taking over the business and our son is more into, uh, I guess, the facility and to financial and my daughter is more into decor and dealing with brides and people's needs. So it's, it's really been a very, I don't know, fruitful life for me. I mean, I built it to support our family, not to shove it down their neck to have them inherit it, but they're going to, which I'm pretty proud of. And for those of you interested in the botanical artistry, of the Ford Flower Company. They can visit our website, which is www.fordflower.com, or give us a call at 603-893-9955 anytime. We're open six days a week at this time of year, and then the fall Christmas season, we're open seven days a week. So stop and smell the flowers, Burlington. From the United Church of Christ, I'm News reporter Tad Stefanak, back to you in the studio. Police Chief Michael Kent said in a release that the Burlington Police Department has earned its reaccreditation from the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission. The department received its award at a ceremony on Wednesday, May 3rd at the Connors Center in Dover. The accreditation process is long and vigorous. It involves both an internal self-review and an external assessment by the commission's team of experts. It is considered the best measure for a police department to compare itself against the established best practices around the country and region. To conduct the initial self-assessment and prepare for the on-site review of the 246 mandatory standards and 83 optional standards by the Commission, Chief Kent appointed Lieutenant Thomas Brown to serve as the Department's Accreditation Manager in 2011. This is the fourth time the Burlington De Department has received its accreditation through MPAC. They first earned the accolade in 2008. Chief Kent said earning a reaccreditation re affirms that the department maintains the highest possible standards and that he is proud of the hard work by his team during the process of obtaining it. We go now to B News weatherman Peter Brown in our weather center for the latest forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Ian Cassiola to see what's happening in Burlington. Well, hello everyone, and this is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the uh, next seven days. And unfortunately, if you're a real warm weather fan, as I'm sure most of us are, this really unfortunately is not going to be the forecast for you coming up. I know I hate to start off on a bad foot like that, but as you can see here, starting off our period on Friday, we see temperatures only in the low to mid 50s in the Burlington area, almost 10 degrees below average um, for this time of the year. As you can see, as we're heading out towards the end of the period, look at that, looking into the middle of May already. Look at this, our average temperature should be approaching 70 by that time. And unfortunately, we're going to be a little bit away from that. Really, the only, the only big positive that I can really say for the upcoming week is the days continue to get longer and we have tons of sunlight there. Now, as we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going to be going on with our weather for the next seven days. Now, starting out on Friday, uh, going into the weekend, we're going to see an actually fairly powerful system coming through here in southern New England in the Burlington area. This is going to bring some very, very heavy rain to our area, maybe on the order of two to three inches of rain by the time we get to Saturday morning, and with some embedded thunderstorms, especially as we get into Friday afternoon. Going to bring some very breezy conditions from the east and northeast, and of course, 
with those easterly and northeasterly wind directions, we're going to see very cold and very damp conditions for this time of the year. And once this storm system passes by us on Saturday, it's going to kind of linger over northern Maine and over southeastern Canada. And this is going to be due to a blocking pattern that's going to be developing out over the central and northern Atlantic. So that's going to keep some very weak low pressure centers kind of spiraling around New England. That's going to be keeping us in a persistent onshore flow of wind. So we're going to have that cool raw wind coming off of the ocean. And we're going to basically have a chance of showers almost every day coming up. Now as we move on to the next slide, I'm going to show you a little bit about this blocking pattern that's going to be developing over the um, northern and central Atlantic. And this is something that we call a Rex block in meteorological terms. Now this is going to be not setting up this close to us obviously, but it's going to be setting up actually over in the Azores and up onto Greenland. And what a Rex block is, that's when you have a strong low pressure center to the south of a very strong high pressure center to the north of it. Now what that happens is the combination of the circulation around these two systems keeps a constant easterly flow going between the two systems. Now that's going to translate here for southern New England, the Burlington area, and we, like we said, a persistent easterly flow off of the ocean for the next seven to ten days really. And that's going to block any storm systems that come by us from really going out to sea. So again, that's going to keep, of course, the cool and damp weather here. And that's basically the um, mechanics that are going to be going on in the atmosphere. Not something very spring-like, that's for sure. And as I've noted right here, spring is definitely going to be on vacation this next week. As we go ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the temperatures and everything that we're expecting for the next seven days. And pretty much, unfortunately, what you see is what you get here. Again, starting out Friday with some very, very heavy rain here in the Burlington area, starting around the mid-morning to the lunchtime hour or so. Again, as we head into the evening commute, as you're heading home, that rain's going to get very, very heavy and probably maybe to the tune of maybe a quarter an inch an hour with some thunderstorms embedded in there. Now, as we get into Saturday, it looks like Saturday's actually going to be the warmest day out of the seven days. And, of course, that's not saying much because every day this week coming up, we're going to see temperatures well below average. And look at this even at night. We're going to see some pretty chilly conditions here for this time of May. And again, we're going to introduce a chance of showers and scattered storms maybe every single day. So folks, unfortunately, getting out there, we don't have a very spring-like pattern, but hopefully this rain is going to continue to fill up our reservoirs so that we'll be all set for the beautiful weather coming up this summer. So get out there, enjoy the weather, and have a great week. Hello, and welcome to your community calendar. Transport your mother back to the good old days with a musical performance from a famous orchestra. On Sunday, May 14th at 3 p.m. at the Fogelberg Auditorium at Burlington High School, the world-famous Glenn Miller Orchestra returns to the Burlington Community Concert Series for a special Mother's Day performance on Sunday, May 14th at 3 p.m. With its unique jazz sound, the Glenn Miller Orchestra is considered to be one of the greatest bands of all time. Memorable hits include In the Mood, Moonlight Serenade, Chattanooga Choo Choo, Everyone is Welcomed, and tickets are $25 for adults, $20 for seniors, and $5 for students. For more info on the event, visit bcattv.org or call 781-270-1860. You can also email Burlington Theatre at tickets at bpsk12.org. Take a look at one of mankind's greatest inventions. Beer. On Thursday, May 18th at 7 p.m., the Burlington Public Library will be having a presentation on New England's craft breweries with Michael Wick. New England has been considered to have been instrumental in the birth of the craft beer movement. It also has some of the greatest craft breweries in the U.S. Discover the rich history of craft beer in the area, and you will get to learn about the standout breweries scattered throughout New England. There will also be a door prize with a sample of beers from New England's craft breweries. Everyone is welcomed, and the event is free. For more info, visit burlington.org or call 781-270-1690. It's time to start running. This annual event is back once again at BHS, and it's all for a good cause. On Sunday, May 21st at 9 a.m., the Burlington High School Burlington Education Foundations will be having their 13th annual 5K road race and family fun run on Sunday, May 21st, starting at 9 a.m. There will be a one-half-mile family fun run for all ages at 9 a.m. Then there will be a 5K run beginning shortly after the family fun run at 9.30 a.m. There will also be food and drinks provided by King's Bowl, Harvey's Ice Cream Truck, and Wegmans. 
as well as games and much, much more. Check-in begins at the high school at 8 a.m. Everyone is welcomed. Pre-registration is required, and online registration ends on Thursday, May 18th. For more info on the event and to register, visit BurlingtonEducationFoundation.org. This has been your Community Calendar. I'm Ian Cassiola. Back to you in the studio. There's been a lot of action on the sports field. We go now to B News report, sports reporter Matt DiMarzio for the latest Red Devils action. Hey everyone, this is Matt DiMarzio here with your weekly sports report. Another week, some more, some more rain, but some more exciting news for Burlington High teams. On Thursday, the softball team had quite a victory at Marvin Field against Arlington, one of the top teams in the Middlesex League. The Red Devils' offense was terrific as Burlington beat Arlington by a 10-6 score. It was only the second loss of the year for Arlington as Burlington continues to play well for a, after a slow start. The boys' track team had the highlight of the week, winning the Division Three State Relays. Last weekend, the Red Devils set three school record in the process. Also last week, the boys defeated Wakefield, taking a big, big step toward winning the Middlesex League's Freedom Division title. The boys lacrosse team had one of the biggest wins of the spring at BHS against a very good North Andover team. The Devils scored the winning goal with just six seconds remaining to beat the Knights 15-14. It was a crazy game with both teams making several scoring runs before Burlington had the final say. If you have free time on Saturday afternoon, go check out the Burlington baseball team's game against Arlington. Not only does it promise to be a good game for the Devils, who were 5-4 and four after the first nine games of the year, but the contest will be played on the new turf field at Shawshank Tech in Barica. If you haven't seen it yet, it's worth the trip. The new surface and complex is amazing. That's all for your weekly sports report. I'm Matt DiMarzio, and back to you guys in the studio. One place where there is always a lot happening is the Senior Center. We go now to Council on Aging Director Marge McDonald for the latest senior news. The beautiful weather is finally here, and with it, the walking group is in full swing, meeting at the high school track Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. through the end of June. Also coming up this month at the Senior Center, we are showing the movie 27 Dresses on Monday the 8th at 12.30 p.m. And we start our Fallon Dafa classes, a form of Tai Chi, on Monday at 3 p.m. On Wednesdays, on Wednesday, we have Big Smile Productions here with their show, a 1940s radio show. Come hear the oldies but goodies, such as Burns and Allen, Abbott and Costello, and more, including some of the radio commercials and songs of the late 30s and 40s. The same day at 6 p.m., Heather Hurd of Blue Cross Blue Shield will be at the center to talk about what you need to do as you turn 65 to make sure there are no gaps in your coverage. She will explain the different parts of Medicare, the timeline you have to sign up, the Advantage plans, as well as plans for early retirees. The residents from Leahy Hospital will be co-sponsoring the countdown to 65 with pizza, since this will be at dinner time. Please call 781-270-1950 by noon on Wednesday, so we make sure we have enough pizza. Our Life After Loss group will begin meeting twice a month, the next meeting being Wednesday, May 17th at 1 p.m. Dental Bright will also be here at 1 for the oral cancer screening, and at 5 p.m., Bill Ricker Crossings is our Wednesday night supper this month. You must sign up in advance for the supper. The latest in scams include doctors and doctor's offices notifying the Federal Centers, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, that they are receiving prescription renewal requests from unfamiliar out-of-state pharmacies. When doctors realize the requests are for prescriptions or supplies their patients do not receive, they deny the request but make sure you are reviewing your quarterly Medicare summary notice and your Medicare explanation of benefits to ensure Medicare is billed accurately. If there are any questions about prescriptions, doctors, pharmacies, or services listed on the benefit statements, call your plan or 1-800-MEDICARE. Some of the work on the Senior Center may begin earlier than expected. So long as you are regularly signing in when you come to the Senior Center, you will receive a robocall from me letting you know of any cancellations or changes. The call says it's coming from Cambridge, according to some seniors. Phone calls will be my primary form of communication, although I will tweet and post on Facebook. 
it will likely not go on the website as I can't change anything on the website from my phone. You may have also noticed that a fence went up around what will be the new front entrance. Please be extremely careful in that area and slow down so you can react to other drivers. That's all for now. I'm Marge McDonald and I hope to see you at the Senior Center. Another week, another photo to highlight. This week's photo takes a look into history in one of the lesser known battles of the Revolutionary War. It was sent in by Linda McNamee, who credits her husband Paul as the photographer, and it features their son, Evan, with two historical recreators at the Monotomy Battle reenactment that was part of Arlington's Patriots Day observance. According to the Arlington Historical Society, the battle happened on April 19, 1775, the first day of the Revolution, and pitted townspeople of Monotomy, now known as Arlington, against redcoat soldiers who were burning houses to cover a retreat. Eleven colonists were killed, as well as two British soldiers. Thanks, soldiers, excuse me. Thanks for the photos, Linda and Paul. We'd like to see your photos. They could be something you see around town, the weather outside your own door, or even photos of your family members and pets, whatever you think is interesting and would like to share. Email your photos to bcat at bcattv.org with the subject line, Photo of the Week. Chronicle did a nice uh, feature on Burlington this week, and if you get a chance or you didn't see it and you'd like to, you can uh, get a link to it on uh, our website at bcattv.org, www. Uh, also, while you're there, please sign up for the B News Weekly Daily Newsletter produced by B News Director Rich Hosford. This uh, now, as you know, the print media is declining on a daily basis, and B News Weekly's daily newsletter is now a more complete look at the news that's happening in and around Burlington on a daily basis. Okay, that's it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher, along with Rich Hosford, Tad Stefanak, Robert Parrish, Peter Brown with weather, Matt DiMarzio with sports, Marge McDonald with senior news, and Ian Cassiola with the Community Bulletin Board. Thank you for joining us.